Thank you for joining the Healing Place Global Alliance Weekly Scripture Study. My name is Dr. Denise Williams, and I'm your facilitator for this session. We meet here every Thursday night at 8 p.m. And to find out more about our events, please visit www.thebrokenvesselspeaks.com. At this time, we're going to ask Minister Brittany Henshaw to open us up in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for yet another time to come together. We thank you that we were able to set aside time to come together to hear a word coming forth from our teacher, Lord God. Anoint her, give her the right words, and just allow her to speak to our hearts on tonight, Lord God. May our hearts be open as receivers to receive this word, Lord God. And let it be implanted as a seed to grow, to be watered, and to produce fruit in our lives, Father. I thank you for each and every one of the women on this line tonight, Father. And I thank you for each and every one that is absent from the line. I pray that you protect over them, keep them, and bless them, Father. And I thank you for your presence on today, Lord God, that kept us um, safe, that gave us the strength to get through this day. So, Father, we just release anything from our day, Lord God, that may still be on our minds or on our hearts, preventing us from hearing your word today, Lord God. We just release it in your capable hands and trust, Lord, that you have a plan and purpose for it um, and that tomorrow is a new day and we will wake up refreshed and ready to go. But tonight, we're just waiting for a word from you. We love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, we thank God for Pastor Aileen being on, Minister Henshaw, and also Minister Felder. We thank God for you ladies being able to join us for tonight. We are in our book. This is the 14th chapter of our part, part three, chapter 14 in our book, um, Daniel 70 Weeks, the Keystone of Bible Prophecy. Prophecies and Patterns, book two, and it is written by William Strauss. If you want to download it, it's a great read. It's a great study guide to be able to go through and look at your scriptures and study along. You don't read it like a novel. You read it more like a workbook, and it will bless you if you use it in that capacity. So we are in chapter 14, which is Daniel 9 and the Messiah's purpose. So we're going to be, uh, for those of you that have your Bibles, a lot of we're going to do a lot of Daniel chapter 9 um, tonight. And um, um, Brittany, if you could find Daniel 9 and 24, that would be great. And while she's finding it, I'm just going to give you guys kind of like a little a little update on Daniel chapter 9. Now, Daniel 9, it's, 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 <sighs> Daniel chapter 9 has been misinterpreted for many, many years, okay? So is Daniel chapter 9 a prophecy about Jesus' death? And the coming of the anti-Messiah, or as we know him, the Antichrist, or is it a prophecy about the death of the Messiah and Israel's national restoration and redemption? Because we know at this point, Israel was not, Israel had to repent. Brittany, did you find um, Daniel chapter nine? I did, Daniel chapter nine, verse 24. Mm -hmm. It says 77s are decreed for your people in your holy city to finish transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. Okay, so after reading that, we know that this is speaking directly to Christ because we don't want to lose the essence of Daniel chapter nine. There are seven things that Brittany just read that only Jesus can do. Okay. And those things are, let's start with the first one, put an end to rebellion, bring sin to completion, atone for iniquity, did that by dying on the cross. He is and brought in perpetual righteousness to seal the prophetic vision and to anoint to anoint a most holy place. That holy place, by the way, is not necessarily a physical place. The anointing that most holy place is within our hearts. That's what Jesus came to do, is to take religion from a building and from a system 
and place it in our hearts. Because up until that time, Israel were very um, centered on the rabbi and the synagogue. And what Jesus did was he took that, that system and transferred it into our hearts. Now we don't have to go to a church building to get in touch with God. We could pray from where we are. So he sanctifies us as salvation so that we could communicate with him. Does anybody have a comment or question at this point? Okay, so Daniel is talking to God and, at, and, to, and telling God to remember the covenant. That's Daniel 9, 4, and 5. Brittany, can you get that for us while I'm talking? Daniel 9, 4, and 5. He's pleading with God to remember his covenant and the mercy that was promised to Abraham and his seed. Because we know that Abraham's seed was blessed. Did you find that for us, Britt? Daniel 9, 4, and 5. You can unmute yourself when you're ready. I sure did. Daniel 9, 4, and 5 says, I prayed to the Lord, my God, and confessed, Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. I mean, Daniel, Daniel realized that Israel is in trouble again, and they have strayed away from the Lord. And that's what Daniel 9, 4, and 5 is doing. God, Daniel is pleading on behalf of the people for God to, um, to forgive them, to repent. And the reason why is because he wants Israel to be a right standing with God so that the promises of, of Abraham and his seed would be fulfilled. But what he didn't know was that had to be fulfilled anyway. That was going to be fulfilled anyway, because without that promise being fulfilled, Jesus Christ wouldn't have come. So that promise had to be fulfilled. Amen. So now if we pop over to, here's another um, situation where we can kind of confirm that if we go to Genesis 22 and seven, I think I could find it right quick. Genesis 22 and seven. And when we read Genesis 22 and 7, it's just, it's just a confirmation of the Old Testament echoing the New Testament. And the New Testament corresponds with the Old Testament. Amen. So in Gen Genesis 22 and 7, it says, And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? So this is speaking of Jesus being that lamb and being that sacrifice and dying on the cross. So that was already in place. God had, had that in place before Abraham. He always had the way of salvation mapped out before the beginning of time. So it's almost like with Abraham and with Daniel, they are just echoing what God has already put in place in the sacrifice of the lamb, which is Jesus Christ. So that seed that Abraham is talking about, let's go to, is that Galatians? Galatians 3 and 13. Britt, can you find that for me? Galatians 3 and 13. So one of the other things that Paul spoke to in Romans 2 and 29 is that he was talking about the circumcision of the heart. Israel was very focused on outward appearances of holiness, outward appearances of holiness. And you find even today, there are some people who are very focused on the outward appearance of, of holiness. If you look holy, if you dress a certain way, if you, they, they consider those things to be holy, but that doesn't make a person holy. A relationship with God is what makes people holy, but you cannot, you can't do that by forcing people to wear certain things or they can only go certain places or you're saying that certain places are not good or not not wholesome because it's what's in your heart that counts. Britt, did you find that scripture for us? Yeah. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Right. So Jesus actually became sin for us. Every sin that you could think of in your mind, Jesus became that 
so that he could he could pay the price for that sin. Every sin that you could think of, the most reprehensible sin, he became that so that we could walk in the newness of life. Anybody have a thought about that they would like to share? Just think about that. Every sin that mankind could ever commit, Jesus became that. That's pretty deep. When you think of people who've done heinous crimes, heinous murders, violating children, any crime that you could think of in your, in your mind that is heinous, he has paid the price for that sin. It's more than just lying and cheating and stuff like that. It's the worst of the worst type of sin that anybody could commit. He died on the cross for that. So this is why it's important for us to understand that Daniel 9 and, 20, 9 and 24, well, the whole chapter of Daniel 9 is speaking to the six things that only Jesus could have accomplished. So it's a lot, it's, it's the, the, the whole chapter is in larger context than just Israel being redeemed or Israel being restored. It also speaks to Christ who is going to come and not only restore them, but these are some, there's certain um, benchmarks that he's going to hit. And that's what we read. There's those six benchmarks. Because again, Israel was a people that did not have a relationship with God the way we do today. Their, their, their faithfulness was measured by their obedience because the Holy Ghost didn't dwell in them like it does in us. There was no speaking in tongues. There was no Holy Ghost indwelling inside of them like how we have today. So that means that they had to be obedient. That's why in the Old Testament it says obedience is better than sacrifice because they had to obey God. But when Jesus came, his spirit indwells inside of us. And I'm going to read Romans 2 and 29. Actually, Britt, your Bible will read it better. Can you find um, Romans 2 and 29 for us? Because what God was doing was he was separating the sheep from the goats, meaning that those that just wanted to be in re religiosity and just follow rules, he was wanting more from mankind. He wanted their heart. He wanted to dwell in their spirit. Britt, did you find that for us? Yes. It says, but he is a Jew who is one inwardly. And circumcision is that which is of the heart by the spirit, not by the letter. And his praise is not from men, but from God. So that's what that's what Jesus is talking about. There's a circumcision of the heart. He wants to cut the nasty things out of our heart because in our flesh and from our mouth, you can say anything out of your mouth. You can say anything out of your mouth. We call it being two-faced. You're saying one thing, but in your heart, you're harboring something else. So Jesus wanted to circumcise our heart so that what's in our heart will come out. Not the things that we're thinking that are fleshly or worldly or, or bitterness or anger or anything like that. Because if we don't let Christ in our hearts, our hearts can be filthy. But on the surface, you can still be saying, amen, praise the Lord and going to church every Sunday. So God wanted a deeper relationship with us. He wanted a deeper relationship with Israel. But Israel, as we know, they rebutted against everything that God told them that he wanted them to do. They would only obey if they thought that they could get out of trouble. So it was like a fair weather relationship. When I need you, Jesus, um, when I need you, God, I'm going to obey you. But when I don't need you and I feel prosperous and I feel like, you know, the danger has passed, I'm going back to my old ways. Pastor Aileen said, man sees the outward, but God sees the heart. But see, that's why, excuse me, that's oh, why Israel, Israel um, had a group of people that was actually doing what God would have them to do, being obedient. And then you had some that were just going through the motion. And what had, ha what had happened is he had to remind them that they was not doing him any favor. Um, he came he came so we could have life you know and uh -huh. they was doing all kind of things that was not of God they was just following a system and that system was not of God I mean when, when, when we think about different things he had to remind us that when the second Adam came to redeem uh -huh. the second Adam came to redeem us because the first Adam was a finding fault <laughs> uh -huh. in, in the woman and which he was already given orders on what to do. Uh 
-hmm. and he didn't do it. So the second Adam and the second Adam, which is the second lamb, came to redeem us. And when that second lamb can redeem, he took all the sin away. He made a way. He gave us repentance Mm -hmm. to be able to repent from our wrong. Because Mm -hmm. there's some things that we know that are wrong and some things that we don't know that is wrong and it's wrong. So that's why he gave us that to redeem us. And then when we look at Israel at the time when he was talking about Israel, Israel, when I talked about the system, uh-huh. they were just doing things. They were just doing things, thinking that that was the right thing to do, um, that it was pleasing to one another. Uh-huh. And that's not what God wants. Yes. You know, he wants you to have um to trust him and to be grateful and show some gratitude. And and that's the same with what's happening today. Don't think it's strange that we are going over this um Daniel 9 tonight because this this is what actually what we are seeing in today's time mm-hmm. with people and with some of the remnants, because some remnants is not doing what God said to do. They just go, they just have a system and they're not practicing the system and they're telling the saints, what they want them to know, and that's not of God. That's why he said, the study to show yourself approved, right and divine the word of truth. Because once they get in your heart, your heart has a your heart has a mind of its own too. Because it houses the Holy Spirit. It houses God Himself. So therefore, you know, we would not be um uh I, I want to say taking advantage of, uh-huh. we won't be ill speak of, um, we won't, we will know what to do or what not to do. Amen. And how to know exactly what God is saying to us in this time, because right now, you know, he brought to me on Sunday, I'm judging you. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm judging. Amen. And, people, and we're not ready for it. He said, they're not ready. I'm doing the judging, but they're mm-hmm. not ready for it. Amen. Amen. But you got to keep your, uh, I'm kept my promise. Keep your promise. Make that vow to me and do what you're supposed to do because I've already told you, don't let your heart be troubled. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then he also said, I'm coming for you. I'm coming to prepare a place for you. Amen. So now that you got us to that point now, uh, which is what, what um, Pastor Aileen is saying is watch out for wolves and sheep's clothing. Yes, because clothing. when we believe in a system, when we believe in the dogma of religion more than we believe in what the Bible itself says, this is how we end up as Israel in Daniel chapter nine. Now right. they're, in a, they're in a state where they have to repent because a lot of times people will make it seem like their way or their system is the only way to engage God. You have to be dressed a certain way. You got to bring a certain amount of tides. You got to do this. You got to do that. And that's not what God is saying at all. Um, right. Brittany, can you find Colossians 2 and 11? And we're going to read two, Colossians 2, 11 through 13. This is an important aspect of what Daniel chapter 9 is speaking to. Again, God is dealing with the hearts of the people in this season. Yeah. Brett, did you find it? Yes, it says, and in him, you were also circumcised with a circumcision made without hands in the removal of the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised up with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your transgressions, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions. Okay. Now the next scripture goes on blotting out the handwriting and ordinances. He's talking about the system. See, we have to remember that, yes, we operate within the system of a church body. We know we're supposed to pay tithes. We know we're supposed to serve in our respective churches and ministries. We know that. But When it comes down to what God said, we have to be very careful about that dividing line about what is truth and what is hearsay and what is downright error. Like Pastor Aileen is saying in the chat, you got to watch out for wolves in sheep's clothing because in this season, 
The enemy is like a roaring lion. We read that scripture. And he's seeking anybody who th he thinks is weak in the faith. He's looking for people who are not studying their word. Because if you're not studying, you don't know when the wolf is coming. And the wolf will make it seem like something is of God when it's really not. So this is why it's important. We're in Colossians 2 and 11, where it talks about the circumcision of the heart. Because one thing about the spirit of God, if it doesn't resonate in your spirit, that's God telling you that this is not me. If something doesn't feel right in your spirit, that's the Holy Ghost telling you, no, you better hesitate because this is not of God. This is not of me because we were buried with him in our sins, but we came up in the newness of life. So we came up out of that water as a new person. It may seem to us that all we did was go get dunked in the water, but if our heart is in the right place with God, you came up with a different spirit than when you went down. So that spirit is constantly going to resonate with Christ constantly. Somebody might say something or invite you somewhere and you'll be like, and that Holy Ghost will kick in and say, I don't know. I don't think that's right for me. That's God speaking to you right in that moment. A lot of times we miss God because we don't know when we hear his voice. We don't know. We think, we think that hesitancy is fear. And then we just go on into it thinking that, oh, I was just fearful. That's not fear. That's all. You have to know the difference between God speaking to you and warning and God speaking to you and saying that's fear operating inside of you. If you don't know God, you won't know which one it is. And you would pick the wrong thing and be captive to the wrong situation. Be in some church body where they have some strange rules, where they lock in the doors and turning out the lights and doing all kinds of crazy things because you are led astray. This is why it's important in this season to know God in the pardon of their sins. Israel kept failing because they didn't know God. Like I said, it was a fair weather relationship. When they felt like they were being oppressed, they loved God. They knew how to follow all the ordinances when they were oppressed. But then when they felt that they were in a season of safety, if you will, they chose to go outside of God's ordinances again. Anybody have a comment or a question at this point? I'm going to open the floor right there. <clears throat> that, that that's why he said that we can't just go along with a system. Go, we supposed to be in tune with the promises of God. We have to have a covenant with Him mm -hmm. to make sure that if we make a vow, to don't break that vow. Because mm -hmm. he said, if you're gonna make one, it's best to keep it. Because if you're not gonna keep it, it's best not to make one. And when he talks about circumcision in the heart, a lot of people, you know, they, they think about circumcision and they um they think about when they did the boys. They they, they that was that when when they the boys had to get the foreskin, you know, removed, you know, that that's what makes sure that, you know, a contamination or germs or whatever, you know, even with us, if we don't put what needs to be in our heart, it could be contaminated. Amen. You know, and a lot of people don't want to look at it that way, but yeah. that is the, that is the reason why the, 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 the male babies had to get circumcised because it mm -hmm. was a reason. So therefore, when we when we go down to be, um, we take Romans nineteen. Miss Felder, uh oh, she just dropped. But I understand the point that she was taking us to about circumcision. Everything in the Bible, in the Old Testament, a lot of it was symbolic. When God dealt with Israel, that was symbolic. The, the circumcision was cutting off skin that was dead. That skin that, that, that a person, you don't need that. God is circumcising your heart the same way he's cutting out those things that we don't need. Okay. The Pastor Aileen is saying the same thing. Having your name on a church roll just means that you went down there and you said, oh, I want to join the church. But if your heart has not been circumcised by Christ, you just join the church. It's almost like joining the civic right. club or the glee club. That's all you did. But God wants to right. circumcise us from the inside because he wants us to recognize him as king. Britt, did you find Isaiah right. 9 and 6 for us? Okay, you got your mute on. I said I did not hear you say that, but I'm. Oh, I put right it in the chat. So I thought you were in the chat. That's okay. 
Isaiah 9 and 6. I got you right now. Okay, good, good, good. Isaiah 9 and 6 says, For a child will be born to oh, sorry. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Abba, Prince of Peace. Amen. That's what God is setting us up for. That's what Daniel chapter nine is about. It's 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 God's promise to Abraham's seed that he, the Messiah was going to be brought forth through this line. We are to become one spiritual family, Jews and Gentiles together. Why? Because Jesus is going to be our ultimate king. He is the king. And that's what Daniel chapter nine is, is pointing us to in scripture. Also, let's, let's look at Galatians 3 and 16. Galatians 3 and 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Brittany, do you have Galatians um, 3 and 16? I'd like them to hear it in a different version as well. So what God is saying in this scripture is that we are seeds, but there's only one seed, which is Jesus Christ. We are not a scattered nation. We are one in Christ. So he's making that, he's reminding us that Abraham's promise is still, it still stands. God doesn't make promises and then take it back. That promise still stands. Britt, do you have it? Yep. Can you read My, it? Now the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. And he does not say, and to seeds, as referring to many, but rather to one, and to your seed, that is Christ. Amen. So we are all one in Christ. We thank God for Minister Lois coming on the line with us. Minister Lois, we are in our book. Keystone of Pro Bible Prophecy, Daniel 70 Weeks, Part 3, Chapter 14. And knowing Minister Lois like I do, she's probably already studied this already. Bless the Lord. And we are talking now about Christ being our King. And this is what Daniel Chapter 9 is speaking to. Although many writers have misinterpreted Daniel Chapter 9, the essence of the chapter is pointing us to two things, the restoration of Israel and how Christ is going to come to unify the Gentiles with the Jews so that we could become one spiritual family. Here's the thing. There's no division in Christ. So a way had to be made for the Gentiles. I thought I heard somebody trying to speak. Okay. So a way had to be made for the Gentiles. Anybody else with a comment or a question? Well, I have one comment. I remember uh, Jesus had said to his disciples one time, I have a fold that you know nothing of. And that speaks to the, the Gentiles versus the, the children of Israel. Exactly. Right? Because, because Israel kind of got a little haughty with it because they thought they were the only ones that could hear from God. And God was saying, wait a minute, I have another flock. That's what Jesus meant when he said he has another flock that you know not of because he knew that at his death, and his resurrection, it unified the Gentiles with the um with, with the Jews. It unified us. So we are all one body. So all the promises that's made to Abraham, we 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 inherited those same promises. Brittany, can you find Ephesians 2 11 through 18 for us? So that's what the old and the new, the essence of the old and the new Testament is one speaks to the other and one spe and one references the other. The old Testament speaks to the new Testament and the new Testament references the old Testament. So they both coincide to help us understand that it's all one God. It's one, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So God's plan after Adam's sin was to reconcile mankind, all of mankind through one promised seed, which was Jesus Christ. So we can't discount 
Daniel chapter nine and just say, oh, it's about the restoration of Israel. In order to restore Israel, the Gentiles had to be involved. Especially since they were scattered among the Gentile nations. Exactly. Exactly. So it was, it's a messianic message. It's a sacrificial message. And it's a redemptive text, meaning that it's it's telling us about the redemption, the Messiah is coming, and the sacrifice he ultimately makes to redeem us, to redeem us is found in Daniel chapter nine. Um, Britt, did you find that for us? Yes, Ephesians 11, or two and, eight, two and 11, two, I'm sorry, two, 11 through 18. 11 through 18. It says, therefore, remember that formerly you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Wow. But now. In Christ, bless them, you bless them. who formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall by abolishing in his flesh the anonymity, which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances so that in himself he might make the two into one new man, Amen. thus establishing peace, yes. and might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross, by it having put to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have our access in one spirit to the Father. Amen. Verse 17, he preached to them that were near and far. Those that were near was supposed to be Israel. And those that were far was us, the Gentiles, the mankind that was afar off. But in the next verse 18, he says, through him, we both have access to the father. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. God is not a God of division. God is a God of unity. So in Daniel chapter nine, it's already speaking to a Messiah coming that's going to bring unity. And God already knew that there would be an upheaval about it because the Jews got upset at one point and they started saying, these people are coming in here. They're not getting circumcised. They're not going through the rituals. They're not going through all of this stuff that we had to go through. So why is it that God is not speaking to that? Because they're not understanding that God is a symbolic God. Before Jesus Christ came, a lot of the things that they did was symbolic. The killing of the doves, the killing of the lambs, that was symbolic. Now they were not ready for the shift. And you're going to find in your Christian walk that a lot of people are not ready for the shift. There's a shift that God made moving from the outward to the inward of the heart. And they were not ready to receive that. They were like, what is this speaking in tongues thing? What is this gifts of the spirit thing? They were questioning everything because they liked the old system because it allowed them to keep their dirty hearts, hate their brothers on the inside while pretending on the outside that they loved each other. They liked that system. That was one of the reasons why the early church was persecuted so much by the Jews. Because Christ taught and Holy Spirit taught that he was the fulfillment of all of those sacrifices, all of them. It was no longer necessary for you to make a blood sacrifice in the temple because Christ's blood covered it all. And, and, um, and that was the main reason why when Paul went from city to city, he was persecuted by the Jews, was the main reason why the early Christian Jews were persecuted because they said, we don't have to bring a sacrifice to the temple anymore. Right. Christ is the sacrifice. He's the, he is the fulfillment of all of this. Right. By his blood, we are free. We are forgiven. We are in right standing with God. We do not have to do this anymore. And it was, like you said, people don't like to change. It was a shift. It was why Stephen was stoned. Huh. The shift. 
It was a show. When we when we're dealing with people now, even now, there are those that don't understand in the church mm -hmm. <laughs> that, now. that Christ is the all in all. You don't have to go through the rituals. It's a heart condition. It's a heart relationship. Now we're not saying that you don't have to follow God's commandments. Commandments no, still no. stand. Yes. But the rituals that man has created, that's what we're doing. That's where the separation <laughs> comes because Israel had a lot of um, uh, rituals. Many of them were man-made. Yes. They weren't all commandments from God. Nope. So when Christ came, he got rid of all these. He's like, what are you doing all this for? I left commandments. And when Jesus left his commandments, everything was complete. We don't have to add to it. We don't have to take away from it. But Israel was trying to do that in an attempt to manipulate people. Mm -hmm. and control people mm -hmm. and we know even now in today's time there are there are gatherings I, I don't even want to call them churches there are gatherings where people are controlled they're controlled to give their rent money for tithes they're controlled to dress a certain way they're controlled to open up the deepest secrets of their lives to a, 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 a pastor or a so-called pastor and leadership so that you can prophesy the right way to them there's a lot of manipulation going on Jesus came to abolish all of that. That's why he deals with us in the spirit. And if your spirit is not comfortable with the body of people or a situation, God will tell you, don't get around these people. Don't get involved with these people because you have a spiritual relationship with Christ. Meaning that when, when danger comes, that Holy Ghost steps up inside of you and lets you know, this is not good. This is not right. You may not have all the reasons why it's not right, but something in your heart will keep nagging you to not engage until God reveals to you the whole picture. Does anybody else have a comment on that? Lois, can you find um, um, Psalm 72 verses 7 through 9 while anybody has a comment? We're going to share that. Is there anybody that has something that they would like to say to that? Well, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Okay. First Psalm 72 what? 72 verses 7 through 9. Okay. Let's see if I got it. Come on. Okay, 7. Psalm 72, verse 7 in New King James. In his days, the righteous shall flourish and abundance of peace until the moon is no more. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Those who dwell in the wilderness will bow before him and his enemies will lick the dust. Amen. And that's, that's pretty deep. Mm. He said his, your, his enemies will lick the dust. It means they're going to be face down at his feet. Thank you. Brittany, what are you trying to say? You're muted, you know. No, I was repeating the same thing you were saying at the same time. Your enemies will lick. Lick the <laughs> dust. Right? The, mm -hmm. the God says out that an enemy is going to be under our feet, but while he's down there, he's mm -hmm. going to be licking the dust. Mm -hmm. Now, if that don't give you a reason to give yourself a little praise break, I don't know what is, but that gives me some encouragement right there. Especially when you're going through. <laughs> yes. Because God already established the kingdom on earth. He was using the Jews to do it. Okay. It was supposed to be a theocracy. For those that don't know what that is, that means it was a God-ruled society that God had placed in, in effect back with Adam. That's why he talked with Adam. It was a God-ruled earth. And Adam was perfect. He was a perfect human being. He is the only human being that was made perfect. So was Eve, made perfect. They never knew sin. They never knew lack. They were totally sustained by God. Only two people. After the fall of man, now we are subject to a sin nature that we are born with. It was a theocracy. God ruled government. It was a community, meaning that they were one. They shared resources. That's why you will find that within that community, they always seek out one of their own to do business with. They go to their own banks. They go to their own shoemaker. They go to their own dry cleaners. They go to their whatever they need. If you need a car, they're going to find one of their own that's a car salesman. You need life insurance, they're going to find somebody to do that. You need a realtor, they're going to find somebody to do that because they want the money to circulate within the same community. 
Very important fact, okay? Because God set them up that way. They seek out each other and that's the community and the nation or the commonwealth. That's what a commonwealth is. It's, it's a nation or a community and that's how they operate. But God wants that same operation to happen with all believers. That's why we're unified in Christ Jesus. But as we know, sometimes that divide still exists. It's not the way God wanted it to be, but that's how it was. Okay, so that's how it came about. That seed, it came through Jesus's triumph over death, hell, and the grave. Excuse me. So this is why Daniel chapter nine is such an interesting text for, to look at. And I've been, I've been loosely going over it because, okay, we're going to get to the trans, the, the 70 sun, sevens again, and I'm going to share my screen briefly. And everybody should see that. Here's the 77s. It will end, finish the transgression, make an end of sins, make reconciliation for iniquity, bring in everlasting righteousness. And we know the only one that's righteous enough to bring in everlasting righteousness is Jesus Christ himself. Seal up the vision and the prophecy and anoint the most holy. Only Christ can do these things. Only Christ. There is no one else. So this is why it's important for us to look at Daniel 9, 24 with different eyes, because it's not just about the Jews. It's really about everybody. And it's prophetic because it speaks about not only the Messiah to come, but how he will end um, iniquity. Eventually, iniquity is going to be over forever. That's way down the line. But they're speaking about it here in Daniel chapter 9. There's a reference to it. And that's what we have to remember is that there are some things in the Bible that are literal and there's some things in the Bible that are symbolic. You have to know the difference. In order to rightly divide the word of God, you have to have a relationship with God. Many people read the Bible. Many people um, discern from their understanding what they think God means. But in order to get accuracy in this area, we have to know God in the pardon of our sins. Britt, can you find for us 1 Corinthians 12 and 2? No, I'm sorry. First Corinthians 15 and 14. I'm sorry. Yeah, 15 and 14. Okay. 15 and, read, 14. and listen very carefully as she reads this. 15 and 14 through 23, Britt. And guys, listen carefully to this portion of scripture. Right. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain your faith also is vain. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God because we testified against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless you are still in your sins. Okay, stop right there, Britt. Did you read that? If Christ hadn't died and got raised from the dead, that means we're all still sinners anyway. That's why he had to die and be raised up. This is, this is, this is Paul writing and saying, if that's not true, then we're all still in our sins. But he knew that because there was an inward change in his life, that he experienced a personal relationship with God, that he felt the spirit of God moving in him, that he is no longer the old man and doing the things and thinking the things and, and having desires for the things that he used to have. He knows that that's not true. Come on, y'all. Bless the name of Jesus. Woo! Okay, Britt, verse 18. Yes, God. Yes, God. Bless the name Jesus, of Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. You are so good. You are so good. And oh, give him a praise, baby girl. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are of all men most to be pitied. Both, but now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. 
For since by a man came death, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all, all, all will be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, after that, those who are Christ at his coming. Did y'all see that? Minister Felder told us about the first Adam came death. The second Adam brought life and peace and salvation and holiness to the body and unified us, amen, with the Jews who were supposed to evangelize the entire world, but they failed in their endeavor. So God raised us up. See, God is a good God. If you don't do your job, God's going to raise up somebody else to do it. He's not going to wait for you. So those people that talk about, oh, I'm just praying about it. I'm just waiting on God to show me. God already showed you. You know you're supposed to go. But if you don't go, God will raise up another to do that job which you were supposed to do. And at the last day, you're going to have to give an account for why you didn't do what God has called you to do. Because we all got a purpose. Okay? Okay. Anybody else? Comments and questions? No comments, no questions, no scriptures? So let's go back to those six things. One was to finish the transgression. So atonement had to happen in the spiritual context for Israel. They had to atone for their sins. That's what Daniel was pleading with God for, for him to remember the covenant he made with Abraham and to and, and for and for mercy for Israel so that they have time to atone for their sins. Sounds a little bit like today, right? God is giving people time to come in and give their life to him. That's the grace that he's extending to mankind even now. Even now. Even now. And he was, and, and the scripture they have here is Isaiah. I believe this is Isaiah, but he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him and by his stripes or with his stripes, we are healed. Number two, to make an end of sins. In other words, so that sin does not dominate you anymore. Let's go back to the new man we was talking about. Sin doesn't dominate you anymore. Why? Because in Christ Jesus, you have the power to rebuke the enemy. You have the power to rebuke those, un, uh, those unholy thoughts. You have the power to rebuke those unholy people that keep coming around you and trying to engage you in things that's not Christ. You have power now because he made an end of sins. Yeah. Look at Minister Brittany just praising God back Thank here. God. You Come know, on now. But you know, when you know that you know that you know that you've been set free, you can't help but give God praise. And who would go back to bondage after being free? Well, there are some. Who would do that? That there was somebody some. that wasn't, uh, and I'm going to say this, I don't care who gets upset about it. You wasn't truly saved in the first place. If you tasted Jesus Christ for real, for real for you real. wouldn't want to go back. For real, for real. For real. For real, for real. Okay. Number three, make reconciliation for iniquity, okay? So Jesus reconciled for iniquity by dying on the cross, mm -hmm. okay? The okay. books were out of balance. The sin was stacked against us over here, way down, way down here. Amen. The sin was stacked against us. We couldn't get out from under it, but Jesus did this for us. How about that? <laughs> Glory be to God. How about that? He balance. balanced the scales. So you are not bound anymore by sin, by, by, by people, by circumstances, by spirits, by oppression, by depression. You have the power within you to call those things that are not as though they were. Woo, hallelujah, Jesus. You just got to learn how to use your power. You got to learn how to use your power. Number four, he brought in everlasting righteousness. Because Jesus is righteousness. Is righteousness. Yes, he is. Because of our sin, he laid down his glory to become like us, to die on the cross. But when he rose from the dead, he rose in his power. He rose in his authority and he redeemed us before the father. And guess what? When you stand at the altar that day, he's going to say, oh, no, God, that's one of mine. Uh -uh, not that one. She's one of mine. I know. I know Girl. her by name. I know Girl. her through relationship. Not that Don't you one. See my blood all over her. Don't you see my blood all over her? That's it. Don't you know that That's she it. 
Don't you know that I put her in right standing right before your throne? Father? Come on, Minister Lois. Yes. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. <laughs> Number five, he sealed up the vision and prophecy. That's the prophecy of the 70 Shabuwa. That's a testimony to the Christ fulfillment of the ancient covenant and the mercy that was promised all the way to Abraham. All the way to Abraham. He sealed up that vision and that prophecy and fulfilled it in the, in the Shabuwa. Okay. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Mm, 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 mm. So if you have somebody who's confused, you need to let them listen to this, 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 um, this recording. Or if you can explain it yourself, go ahead and explain it yourself. Because Jesus didn't leave anything on the table. He took care of everything. He took care of everything. Everything. He left nothing undone. Nothing undone. Everything that was required in order for us to be reconciled to the Father was completed. Amen. When he, when he died, everything that needed to be covered was covered. And when he rose, he gave us a way out. Amen. Glory be to God. He really, can you? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lois. I'm sorry. Finish. No, I, finish. I was going to say he covered us and then he gave us a way out. Glory That's it. God. That's it. He yeah. always makes a way for his people to escape. Mm -hmm. uh, Brittany, can you find Romans 5 and 11? And I'm going to wrap it up because I know it's 9.05 and some of us got to get to bed because we got to work in the morning. Romans 5, Romans 5 and 11, baby girl. Thank you. Romans 5 and 11 says, and not only this, but we also exalt in God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Come on now. In other words, we are in the same right standing with God that Adam was in when he once walked in the garden. Now that, that's a mind blower, right? That's right. The same relationship Adam had when he talked directly to the father is what you have right now. When, when Holy Ghost, amen. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and what? Forevermore. So the same God that walked through the garden with Adam is the same God that speaks to you. The same God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same Holy Ghost that resides inside of you. Amen. Now, if you just think about how much power that it is inside of you right now. Woo! Woo! Because you could be saved and not be fully delivered. But when you say for real, and you fully deliver for real, there is nothing in that world that entices me so much that I want to go back over there. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Here's, the Here's also the thing. There's nothing that you go through that you don't know that the Lord will bring you through to the other side. Come on, come on, sis. That did you go. I mean, the confidence that he will be. He said he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He said he will be with you always, even to the end of the age. There is no reason why you would think that you can't make it through no matter what the enemy is. Come on, man, Mr. Lois, yes. The Bible says that nothing is going to separate us from the love of God. Not nothing. death, no life, no things under the earth, no things over the earth. Nothing can separate no God's love for you. Thing. It says no created thing, thing shall separate us from the love of God. Everything is created. Everything. Even Satan and his minions. They've been created. But he can't separate us from God's love. Yes. God's going to love you. Yes. God's just going to love you. Yes. It doesn't nope. matter if you say you believe in him or you don't. God still loves you because you're still his creation. Does yep. anybody have a comment or a question or a scripture before we start to close out? Anybody else? Go ahead and unmute your mic and share your, your scriptures, your thoughts, your revelations. Amen. Amen. Minister Felder. Minister Brittany. Anybody else? Well, it's already been said and then done. I can't take away from, I can't take nothing away from and can't add nothing to that. Amen. Well, we glad you enjoyed the lesson, Mr. Brittany. <laughs> I just like to hear from y'all sometime, Mr. Brittany. Three, <laughs> Minister Felder. I was thinking I am full. That's all I got to say. I, man, this thing, this thing blessed me this afternoon, y'all. Y'all don't even know. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Reverend Aileen, she was, uh-oh, and Reverend Aileen is typing in the chat. Um, she said, heaven and earth will pass away before his word will ever fail. And the lesson was awesome. We thank God for you, Pastor Aileen, um, chiming in with us tonight. Minister Lois, any final thoughts before we close out tonight? 
No, thank you. Um, you just I just got confirmation on some stuff that I've been studying. So I just thank God for confirmation all the way around. Amen. Amen. Days, we are safe inside the ark of safety. We are covered by Holy Spirit and the mm. Christ. There is nothing that can prevail against us. He has told us that we will trample on serpents and scorpions, and then nothing will by no means harm us. So no matter what the enemy is throwing at us, we shall prevail. Glory Jesus. to God. Mm, 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 Glory mm. to God. That, that used to be a song we used to sing. <laughs> Mr. Felder, what'd you say it? Oh, Jesus. He's I almost about... hit somebody to put something in. They, they working on the road and the man ain't got on his vest or nothing. All I saw was an orange horn. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, you driving. I didn't realize you were driving. <sighs> There's an old song that we used to sing when we were kids and it goes... The devil says no, no, but God says yes. Yes, yes. Anything we need, God's gonna say yes to it because we know Him. Amen. We I, know. I was, just thinking, I was just thinking about that song. Living, He loved me. Died, Died and He saved me. Very, He carried, carried my it. sins <laughs> far away. Rising, He justified, freed me forever. <laughs> <laughs> One day he's coming back, Gloria. Oh, I was just thinking uh -oh. about that because that's just what this lesson reminded me of. Oh yes. my goodness, glory be to God. If we sinned and He loved us, yeah, He died and He saved us. Yes, buried He carried our sins far away, far away. Right, He justified us and freed yes. us forever. See, okay. that's the part, that's the beautiful yes. part of yes. Christ. You're yes. free forever from death, hell, the grave, and sin. Glory be to God. Hey. That's Aileen said, amen, minister. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying Amen, amen, amen. So, okay, did, guys. Did you remember the song? Did you remember the song when he said, I got my sword in my hand? Hey. So we got our song to you. Yeah. Now, I don't know that song, but if like, such a song exists, the song, said, our sword. I got my sword in my hand. He said, I got my sword in my hand, and I'm ready for war. I got my sword in my hand, which we have our Bible in our hand. We got God in our heart, and instruction manual is Amen. our word, the word of God. The word so of God. So we got our instruction manual, which is the word of God, and God is in our heart. Where can we go wrong? Amen. Amen. He walk. He walks with us all the time, every single day. Right. He surrounds he said, us with his love, love and his grace and his mercy. And a light unto your pathway. There That's you go. Right. And he covers us in in the blood. See when yes. people see you blood. and people get mad at you for no reason and they start going off on you. It's not because of you. It's because they can see the blood. They Come see on, that. Light. You know what? Oh, all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna slow it down because I'm getting yeah, ready. That, that 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 blood is your oh. covenant. That is your agreement. Listen. That I'm getting ready. Yeah. Yeah. You and your God. Yeah. I'm getting ready to preach here, and we yeah. gotta go. Oh Lord, have yeah. mercy. Mm. It's time for us to say good night. I'm glad you guys enjoyed the lesson, and um, it blessed me. I'm telling you, this study blessed me this afternoon. I'm so glad that I have the time now to come home and study for our lessons because I get out of work early enough. So at this time, we're going to ask somebody to pray us out, Minister Lois. Uh, no, I'm gonna bother Minister Felder tonight. Minister Felder, she driving. Oh, she can't pray. No, I'm finna, I'm finna pull over right now. Okay. I'm pulling over. Okay. Well, while she's fit pulling over, I thank <laughs> God for you guys coming on the line. I'm glad y'all got blessed tonight. And uh, Minister Felder, when you are ready, pray us out. And then everybody hang on for one minute for announcements. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come right now, Heavenly Father. Thanking you, Heavenly Father. Mm. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for expounding on the word tonight, Heavenly Father. We thank you for giving us a better understanding of you, God, who you are and who we are in you, Lord God. Father God, we just thank you for the fellowship tonight, Lord God. Lord God, we ask that you will continue to bless each and every one of us, Heavenly Father, as we go deeper and deeper in your world. And God, we thank you and we bless you for all things and everything in Jesus' name. The Father, let us not leave your presence, Heavenly Father, but you will be always in our heart. In Jesus' holy and righteous name we pray. 
Amen. And thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.